Hi there, welcome to a demo on clustering app. Let's say you are a business user and you are interested in applying clustering to your data. Now, as a business user, you are not interested in coding, but you are more focused on understanding and interpreting the clusters. So in this demo, I will show you an end-to-end -end app which will allow you to do clustering process without writing a single line of code and is perfectly suitable for a business user. And this demo is also available on my platform experiencedatascience.com. You can also try it out with your own data. So my friends, let me now switch to the demo, but do not forget to subscribe to the channel, like and comment on the video. All right, so let us first start by displaying the data. So I will go to this data display in this particular clustering app. And here I see all my data. As you can see that the data is related to cars. You have the different brand name of the car. You have the technical details such as the fuel type, number of doors, body styles, uh, as well as you have the length, width and height, and of course, other details as well as the price of the car. Now, let us decide on what is the ideal number of clusters. So as a business user, I would like to group uh, all these different cars into similar clusters, but how many clusters should I take? Should I take two, three or four or five? And let us find out using, first of all, getting the cluster count, which is uh, number of records in different clusters if we had to simulate various clustering types. For example, if I have to simulate uh, that I'm going to have two clusters, in that case, I will have 129 cars in one cluster and 76 cars in another cluster. Now, similarly, if I have to make three clusters, I would have uh, 52, 112 and 41 in three different clusters. And of course, more number of clusters you make, uh, the number of cars in each cluster decreases. Now, out of this uh, view, what could be the best number of clusters? Should I uh, go with two cluster or should I go with three or four? Now, in order to answer this question, you can do something called as clustering loss analysis, which is also called as an elbow curve in data science terms. And this graph is basically you have the number of clusters on the x axis and you have the loss or which is the inertia which is generated by the data science process. So definitely more number of clusters you have less is the loss, but more number of clusters will have it will also lead into difficulty in interpreting the different clusters. So the recommendation is that you should take number of clusters which correspond to an elbow point, like an elbow of the hand, and you can see that there is an elbow which is formed over here for the cluster number three. So if we take a number of clusters equal to three, uh, this is uh, a good number, it is not too small, as well as it is not too high and it is perfectly uh, suiting because we also find an elbow uh, which is formed at uh, this particular number of clusters. Now, let us also visualize the cluster formation. So here you can see how the cluster would look like for two number of clusters, for three clusters, for four clusters and so on and so forth. So as you can see that uh, if I go ahead with two clusters, I have very uh, nicely formed clusters. The clusters are very separated. If I go for three number of clusters, also I see that the clusters are very well formed and they are very well separated. But as I go higher and higher, the clusters start merging with each other. So the clustering would not be very beneficial for very high number of clusters. So let us go ahead with um, three number of clusters and let us now interpret what does these three clusters mean. You have three clusters, the green cluster, the blue cluster and the red cluster. So this is good, but um, without interpretation, the clustering process itself is not useful. So let us now interpret on what does these clusters mean. And you can do that using this fourth step, which is around interpretation. Right, so I can here select the number of clusters. So we said that we are going to stay with three number of clusters. And here I can see the same visual, which I had shown you earlier. Uh, we have three clusters, the green, blue, and red. 
And here we have and read our chart, which will help us interpret what does these clusters mean. So this radar chart is based on the different characteristics which are available in the data. And let me go ahead and select just a few so that my radar chart is much more clearer. And I will just deselect a few of them. All right, so I will stay with um, characteristics such as the length, the width, the height, the weight, number of cylinders, engine size. Uh, and if you see the red cluster, all the values are very high. So these cars have a very high length, width, height, as well as weight. So I can say that this red cluster, which corresponds to the cluster zero, corresponds to large cars. So let us enter the value large car for cluster zero. Now, if you see the cluster one, which corresponds to the green uh, line over here in the radar chart, and it has got uh, very uh, small values in um, width and length. So let us say that this corresponds to the small cars. All right, so I will enter the small car value over here. And the cluster two is uh, the blue cluster, which corresponds to length and width, uh, as well as weight, which is in between the green and the red. So let's say this corresponds to the medium cars. Voila, so I've entered these three names, I've given the meaning of the cluster, I've used the radar chart to interpret, and then I've given uh, these names, the large car, the small car, and the medium car. Now let us update our visuals so that uh, instead of cluster 0, 1, 2, we have the large car, small car, and the medium car. And similarly, we also have uh, these values also updated in this particular visual. So this is very useful for business users as they can clearly see that there are three clusters and what does these clusters mean. So you have uh, the green cluster which corresponds to the small car, you have the blue cluster which corresponds to the medium car and you have the red cluster which corresponds to the large car. Now let us go ahead and do one more step is to assign these names small, medium, large back to our data. So I'm going to assign this cluster's name to the data. All right, so the assignment is done and as you can see here I have the record of my car and on the right if I go I now see what is the cluster right so this particular car corresponds to a medium car cluster you also have um, the records which are corresponding to a small car as well as you have the record corresponding to the large cars right so this in fact the large car is an Audi right so this is really fantastic and as you can see for business users they were able to go from data to identifying what is the ideal number of clusters as well as then interpreting the clusters and then assigning back the meaning of these clusters back to the data records. If they want, they can also download this data in Excel and use it for further analysis or further usage. All right, my friends, hopefully you have enjoyed this video and this gives you a good idea on what a clustering app for a business user could look like. If you have found this video interesting, do not forget to like, subscribe and comment on the video and see you soon in another exciting demo video.